I think investors have to be fully aware uh, to kind of monitor that as well. If you're uber bullish, just be a little cautious. Long term, hugely bullish. Short term, there's a liquidity issue here that could be drying up and that could force Bitcoin down. We see how the cryptocurrencies are reacting thus far. Not good. Um, but what's interesting, the you know, the grander scheme of things here, Gareth, is that we don't really have a lot of data to go by in terms of how cryptocurrencies act during a tightening cycle. I mean, the last time this really happened was 2015 and Bitcoin at the time was one hundredth of its current price. So we don't know what which way the cryptos will go here. Right. Right. And I think that's important because, you know, in general, the tightening. So this is this is the way I take it is that you had a period from 2009, which is, by the way, when when Bitcoin debuted all the way till now, where the Fed was just pumping money endlessly into the markets. I mean, quantitative easing round one, two, five, 20, whatever it may be. And now they're finally starting to pull back because for the first time we have inflation that's really been above two percent. So you have to assume that pulling money out of the system will have an impact on cryptocurrencies, probably to the downside in the near term. The one caveat I would say is that the Fed cannot endlessly just kind of pull back on QE and raise interest rates because of the US debt. There's going to be a maximum amount that they can do. And the second a new black swan event occurs, whether it's a recession or something we don't know about, you are going to have to see the Fed come in and they're going to start printing money again. So yes, short term, I think downside on crypto makes sense. If you're looking three to five years out, Bitcoin will go higher. Let's go to the Bitcoin chart now and take a look. I think sure. this is fascinating. Is that yes. here's your here's your April high, right? And so many people got so bullish when we pierced it one day here and one day here before reversing. And then we've seen that pretty steep sell-off. And what I would say to people is number one, when we broke it in October, that coincided with the Bitcoin ETF, the futures Bitcoin ETF. Mm -hmm. Just a little history for everyone. The last time you had something debuting, which happened to be the futures for Bitcoin, it marked the top in 2017. So kind of an interesting little parallel there with tops in the Bitcoin market. And there was so much hype then going into the futures debuting. And then same thing with the ETF that debuted. Now, one of the things that has me very concerned near term, and, and you're absolutely right, you know, I'm, I'm a very technical trader. So, so it's all about the charts to me. That's all that matters. Nothing else matters. And what you could see over here in the chart is that we had a head and shoulders pattern right here. And there was kind of like a little M head, right? So you could connect it up here to create that head. But it was a shoulder, head and shoulder. And then there was a neckline here. And what happened was when you broke the neckline, that created the waterfall effect to 30,000 right there. Now, what has me concerned is that we're almost creating the same type of pattern again here, right. where you have a bigger shoulder here, the same M top right here. And then here could be the forming of a right shoulder. And what's scary about that as a technical trader, if right. you're bullish Bitcoin, is that if this breaks, if price gets below this line, which is around 42,000, the calculated downside target is below 20,000 on the charts. And again, that's something that has me very fully aware. I think investors have to be fully aware uh, to kind of monitor that as well. If you're uber bullish, just be a little cautious. Long term, hugely bullish. Short term, there's a liquidity issue here that could be drying up and that could force Bitcoin down. You beat me to that question because I had seen that you were calling for, you know, a Bitcoin possible correction back down to 20,000. I was going to ask you if that was still in the cards. So it is. Yeah, it, it certainly is. And especially the more I see how hawkish the Fed is, you know, one of the reasons why we've, we've seen Bitcoin and the altcoins expand so much is that you've had this kind of liquidity bubble created by the Federal Reserve and to some extent, the US government, right, with checks going out to Americans. A lot of Americans didn't need that money. They were home during COVID. So they put it right into the stock market or right into cryptocurrencies. And as the Fed starts to get more hawkish and, and yields go up on on the 10 year and they start to taper, you're going to see this kind of deleveraging in the system. And that deleveraging will go through the stock market as well as cryptocurrency. So I'm still in the camp that you're going to get great bounces here and there, but ultimately you are going to go lower in cryptocurrency. Let's play out that scenario. If we were to go and re you know, go back down to 20,000, um, then is there a huge rally back after that? 
Not necessarily. Yeah. So, so I do think that just like we saw in the last cycle, so you had the cycle high in 2017, and then you kind of had this trail off where remember, we almost got to 20,000 in 2017 and it bottomed out around 3,500. So, I mean, it gives you a, an idea of how much Bitcoin could decline from 65, 68,000, and it could easily go below that 20,000 and it would just be a run of your mill cycle. Right. So, so I think that that's very important. And, and the other point is, we're in a four-year cycle in Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin debuted in 2009. Then in 2013, you had a high, which was a major kind of eruption move at that point in time. That was four years later. Then 2017, four years later, was the high in th at that point. And here we are in 2021, which is four years later. So my, my, my analysis is pointing more towards a multi-year kind of basing pullback where we'll hover around 20,000 maybe for a year, six months. And then you'll start to see wow. a grind back up That's a eventually. Long time. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is the problem. Everyone wants that instant gratification. I understand it. I wish it was going to be quicker. But if the cycles hold true, the next time you break to the upside, it'll be about three years from now. And then by four years, you'll be making that next major high in Bitcoin, which should be well north of 100,000. So, so what is Gareth Soloway doing right now with Bitcoin? Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. So, so right now with Bitcoin, I, I actually have a small position, which I'm looking for a small bounce. This is a very quick swing trade. I'm a swing trader by, by nature and a day trader. So I'm expecting us to move back to about 52 to 54,000, creating that right shoulder. And then I will be on the sidelines as it declines. My bigger positions where I'm going to put in some serious capital will be when we see 20,000 or sub 20,000. That'll be for a longer term investment in Bitcoin. And I'll hold that for, for multiple years. Let me get your take on this because proponents of Bitcoin would say, well, it's the natural DNA of Bitcoin to have this type of volatility that if it would go down to 20,000, it's normal. And you should just come in and buy at those dips and take advantage. Now, do you buy that narrative? Is it the truth there? Yeah, I mean, there is some truth, right? But it's just as an investor, you have to decide, are you okay being down 50, 60, 70% yeah, right. on your investment, right. you know, before it starts to move up? I've always been someone who, you know, it, it bugs me. I get, I get annoyed when I buy too high and it goes down and I'm down on a position. But again, if you're someone who's saying, hey, listen, I'm, I'm 30 years old and I'm holding till I'm 60 years old, then in the, in the, in the scheme of things, this may not be a big deal. But think about the, return you can generate if you, you know, versus paying 60,000, pay 20,000, the percentage return increase that you'll make when it goes to 500,000 is a huge amount better. This is a big decision for those who have Bitcoin at home. You know, if the 20,000 plays out, do you get out now Yeah. Um, and then get back in? I mean, I know you, you can't give investment advice, but yeah, uh, that's I mean, a scary it's, scenario. It's, it's such a hard thing to say because, you know, again, there's always a chance that I'm wrong. I've been wrong many times in my career investing. Um, the great thing I always remind myself of is that there's always another trade at some point, whether you trade stocks or cryptocurrencies, there's always another trade coming around the corner. So if you miss one, it's not the end of the world. But again, I think each person has to look at their time horizon. I think you also have to analyze what the Fed is doing right. here and all these other factors. Right. You know, one of the best things for me, which which will make me believe in Bitcoin even more, is yeah. believe it or not, when we get some regulation in the system, right? You want to see some regulation. It'll make, you know, the 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 bigger players feel more comfortable. The yeah. more big players get in the system, the more stable Bitcoin becomes. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. 
There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.